So in this video, we're going to talk about how to write augmented matrices and perform row operations. So today we're going to work on solving systems that look like this. So here's our strategy. We're going to use Gaussian elimination to simplify a 3 by 3 system of equations so that it becomes a system that's easier to solve algebraically. Because if you think about um, back when we were solving these systems algebraically, there was a lot of steps involved. So we're going to use Gaussian elimination now first to simplify the system a little bit before we get to the algebra. So to use Gaussian elimination, we need to first set up what's called an augmented matrix. So an matrix that has all the coefficients and the constants of a system of equations. So for example, this system of equations right here, you can see we have represented with this augmented matrix. Notice that the first three columns contain all the coefficients from this system of equations. The last column that's separated by this line here contains all the constants of the system. And notice that P, which is our augmented matrix, is a three by four matrix. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this augmented matrix and we're gonna transform it into row echelon form, which is also abbreviated as REF. So what is row echelon form? Well, it's this form right here where you can see we have this triangle of zeros in this left corner, right? So the first element of row two and the first two elements of row three are gonna be zero in row echelon form. So you may be wondering, well, why do we care? Why, why are we getting this into row echelon form? Well, the reason is because if we go backwards now and take our row echelon form and write out the system of equations that corresponds to it, you'll see that it's a much simpler system than the first one that we had, right? So remember that the first column represents our coefficients of x, second column is our coefficients of y, and third column is the coefficients of z. So if we write out our equations, well, the first equation is the same, right? We have 2x plus y minus 4z equals 7. Row 2, which is equation 2, well, we have a 0 coefficient for x. So there won't be an x term in this equation. We'll just have y, right, 1y, plus 2z equals 11, right? So that's a much simpler equation than the one we had to begin with. And then the third equation, you can see it's been completely simplified to just z equals 3, which actually gives us the value of one of the variables in our system. So now if we work on solving this system algebraically, it's going to be a whole lot simpler than the one that we started off with. So now you may be wondering, well, how did I do this, right? How did I take this augmented matrix here and turn it into row echelon form? Well, the key to doing this is to use row operations. So row operations are operations that we're allowed to perform on a matrix, and there are three types of row operations that we can do. The first one is row switching. Okay, so we just take two rows and switch the positions. We can also multiply a row by a non-zero number. Also, we are allowed to multiply a row by a number and then add it to another row. So let's look at these row operations in more detail. So when we perform row operations, we're also going to use some abbreviations to tell people what we're doing. So we'll number our rows like this. So we'll call row 1 R1, and notice that this 1 is a subscript. Row 2 we'll call R2 and row three we'll call R3. So let's start off with row switching. So in row switching, we're gonna switch the position of two rows. So for example, let's start off by switching row one and row two. So whenever we're performing row operations, we're actually gonna write out in shorthand what it is that we're doing. So you can see if we have this double um, headed arrow right here, that means that we're switching rows. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write down now the matrix that's gonna be the result. And what I like to do when I'm working with matrices is I first write out the row that doesn't change, okay? So if I switch row one and row two, that means my row three is gonna stay the same, right? So I'm just gonna write out row three. And the reason I do this first is because that way I don't confuse myself and make a mistake once I start doing all my switching and multiplying and all of that. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do since I'm switching, I'm gonna take row one and write it where row two should be in this matrix. Okay, so I'm gonna write two, 1, negative 4, and 7. And then I'm going to take this row 2 and I'm going to write it here instead of row 1. So I have 2, 4, 2, and 40. So just to kind of connect this to the system of equations and why this works, um, this is basically the same idea as if I took um, the system of equations and I just like switched the order of the equations. So notice that switching the order of the equations doesn't really change the system itself, right? I just wrote the system in a different order. And that's exactly what we're doing here when we're switching the rows.
So here's our second row operation. We can take a row and multiply it by a non-zero number. So you can multiply a row by a positive number, negative number, fraction, or decimal. So for example, suppose we want to multiply row one by negative two. Okay, so once again, whenever I write my result, I start off by writing the rows that don't change. So if I'm changing row one, my row two and row three are gonna look exactly the same. So I'm just gonna go ahead and write those out. And now I'm gonna work with row one. So before I write each element in row one, it needs to get multiplied by negative two. So I take two, multiply by negative two, that gives me negative four. One times negative two is gonna be negative two. Negative four times negative two is gonna be eight. Seven times negative two is gonna be negative 14. So that's how you can um, you know, take that matrix and multiply the first row by a constant. Another useful thing when we're doing this is to multiply by a fraction. Um, and you will usually use this when you're trying to like reduce a row. Like if you notice that every element in the row just has like a GCF. Um, for example, here in row two, notice that they're all divisible by two. So I wanna like factor out a two basically, which you know you can do by multiplying by the reciprocal. So I'm gonna multiply every element in this row by a half. Um, so once again, if I'm changing row two, that means my one and three are gonna be same. So I'm just gonna copy down those rows first. And so that's what I have here, six, negative two, four, and 44. And now I'm gonna write down each element in row two, but I'm gonna multiply by one half first. So two times a half gives me one, four times a half gives me two, and two times a half gives me one, and 40 times a half gives me 20. Okay, so that's how we take a row and multiply by a constant. So notice that this is similar to what we were doing when we were solving algebraically, right? So we were always taking equations and multiplying by a constant. Um, remember, and then that constant was multiplying every single term in the equation. So it's basically the same idea here, it's just that it's in matrix form. And so now finally we have the row operation where you take a row, multiply it by a number, and then add it to another row. Okay, so for example, what if we're taking negative r1 and adding it to r2? It's very important to remember here in the notation um, that the second row written in this operation is what's going to change. Okay, um, and I know it's confusing because there's an r1 in this, but I'm not changing r1. Um, r1 is actually staying the same, but what I'm doing is I'm taking the negative of r1 and then adding it to r2. Okay, so r2 is going to end up being the row that changes. So that's why I keep track of things by first writing down the rows that don't change. So I'm gonna write down row one and row three because those are gonna be unchanged in this operation. And now I need to multiply by negative R1, okay? Well, I have trouble remembering a lot of stuff, so I like to write things down, okay? So I'm gonna do negative R1 and I'm just gonna write that somewhere on my paper so I can keep track of what negative R1 looks like, okay? Um, it's not part of your matrix. It's not part of like, you know, what you turn in as your answer. It's just something that I'm doing for scratch work. So negative R1 is going to be negative 2, negative 1, 4, and negative 7. Okay, so the reason I wrote that out is because now when I write every element in row 2, I needed to add it to these elements first, right? So 2 plus negative 2 is going to be 0. 4 plus negative 1 is going to be 3. 2 plus 4 is going to be 6. 40 plus negative 7 is going to be 33. Okay? So now let's try another example. Let's try doing 2R1 plus R3. Okay, so again, this is telling me that R3 is going to change, right? So I'm going to start off by writing out row 1 and row 2. So row 1 is here, and then row 2 is 2, 4, 2, and 40. Okay, so now I'm gonna take twice R1, right? Two of R1, so let me go ahead and just like, you know, write that down somewhere so that I know. So that's gonna be four, two, negative eight, and 14. Okay, so those are the numbers that I'm gonna be adding to the elements of row three. So six plus four is gonna give me 10. Negative two plus two is gonna give me zero. 4 plus negative 8 is going to give me negative 4. 44 plus 14 is going to give me 58. Okay, so that's how we take a row, um, multiply it by some number, and then add it to another row. So if you remember, it's just like what we did when we were solving by linear combination, right? We've used this method a lot. Um, 
Um, so for example, if we're combining equation 1 and equation 2 and we want to cancel out x, we would take equation 1, multiply by negative 1, and then add it to equation 2. Okay, so same idea here, we're just doing it in matrix form. Okay, so let's practice some more with some row operations. So given matrix K here, which you can see is an augmented matrix, what is the result of 2R1 plus R3? Okay, so remember this is telling me that R3 is going to be the one that changes. So I'm going to go ahead and write out my matrix. And um, actually, you know what, let's write out the row operation also. So we know that that's why we're you know creating a new matrix. Um, and I'm going to write out the rows that don't change. So my row 1 and my row 2 are not going to change in this problem. So let's see, we have 2, 3, 0, 7, 1, negative 2, 6, and 2. And then now let's do R3. Okay, so I need to figure out 2 R1. So that's going to be 2 times 2, which is 4, 3 times 2, which is 6, 0 times 2, which is 0, and then 7 times 2, which is 14. Now I'm going to add all of these numbers to the elements in row 3. So I have 3 plus 4, which is 7, 2 plus 6, which is 8, 2 plus 0, which is 2, 1 plus 14, which is 15. Okay, and so that's going to be my resultant matrix. So um, I took 2 times row 1, and then I added it to row 3. So now, given matrix K, let's try to figure out what is the result of negative 4 R2. So um, I'm going to take my matrix now, and I'm going to transform it by doing negative 4 R2. So that means my row 1 and my row 3 are going to stay unchanged. So I'm going to go ahead and write those down first. Um, and now let's do negative 4 R2. Okay, so I'm going to take every element in R2 and multiply by negative 4. So I have negative 4 negative 2 times negative 4, which is 8, 6 times negative 4, which is negative 24, um, and then I have 2 times negative 4, which is negative 8. Okay, so that's my answer now. Okay, so now you can go ahead and pause the video and try performing the following operations on matrix C. All right, so the first operation it asks us to do is to swap row 3 and row 2, okay? So we're going to take these two rows and switch them. So I'm going to start off by copying down row 1, and then I wrote 3 in place of row 2, and then I wrote 2 in place of row 3. In the next one, it says add negative 2 R1 and R2. So I copied down R1, and I copied down R3 because those two rows are going to stay unchanged. Um, negative 2 R1, I kind of did my scratch work over here. So I have negative 4, negative 6, negative 2, and 4. So then I did these numbers, so negative 4 plus 3, which gave me negative 1, negative 6 plus 2, which gave me negative 4, negative 2 plus 0, which gave me negative 2, and 4 plus 4, which gave me 8. So we can perform row operations to transform an augmented matrix. This will be very helpful when we're working on solving systems using Gaussian elimination, which is what we're going to do in the next video.